Hello and welcome back to my channel where I share with you Oracle related information for your personal and professional development. If you are stopping by the channel for the first time, uh, you know how we do it here. Please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, smash the like button on this video, um, enable notifications so that you stay informed of when I release new content. And lastly, but not the least, share this video within your network so others may learn as well. So a um, couple of questions for you. How often uh, in your environment do you get uh, the Aura 4031 unable to allocate X bytes of shared memory alert for your databases? And how often are you as DBAs uh, called upon to uh, resolve performance related issues that require you to tune memory for the databases within your environment? Um, well, um, today I have a short video, a short demo that I prepared to share with you uh, on some quick and simple things that I do when I run into such memory related issues um, on my alert logs. So at the end of this video, I certainly hope that I may have been able to refresh your memory about the SGA, uh, the SGA advisor, and some manual V$ views like the SG, uh, like the V$ SG target advice view that I use very often to make decisions regarding memory allocation. So our topic of discussion today on this video is on resolving or a 4031, unable to allocate X bytes of shared memory. Now, in order to provide you background on this error, which is a very common error, unfortunately, Right when memory is requested by the shared pool, uh, which is a memory structure within the SGA, an attempt to allocate a large piece of contiguous memory in the shared pool is made. Now, if the attempt is successful, then no issues, no alerts, everything is functioning as it normally should. Uh, but if that attempt to allocate memory uh, to that uh, shared pool fails, then uh, Oracle does one of two things, or all of two things. Oracle first flushes all objects that are not currently in use from the pool, and the resulting free memory is chunked and merged. If this chunked and merged memory is still not large enough to satisfy the request, then the Aura 4031 error is returned. And you would see that in your logs, you would see that in the alert logs, or whatever the job logs that you were running. So simply put, Aura, 4031 error is raised when memory is unavailable or insufficient for use or reuse within the SGA. So uh, this error can result from multiple things, right? There are certainly more than one reasons why we can have this error. Uh, but for the most part, again, like I said, it is because memory allocated to the SGA is not sufficient. So since we know that this is SGA related, um, it is easy for us, therefore, to start doing a root cause analysis to examine exactly what the cause of this shortage is. Now, remember, most environments that I work in, and of course, there is automatic memory management as opposed to automatic shared memory management. And as a DBA, I hope you are very comfortable with these terms, right? So most environments use automatic shared memory management, which is a combination of SGA plus PGA and these parameters are set independently of each other, right? So you have SGA target, SGA max target, PGA aggregate target, PGA aggregate limit, right? So you have to set these parameters explicitly in order for automatic shared memory management to work. So um, in the case where you're using automatic shared memory management, where you, you're you know, ass assigning SGA a fixed amount of memory, this is kind of when, you know, uh, you would have to look at you know some of the advisors that I would mention here going forward, right? Now, for SGA related memory problems, you will certainly would see the aura 4031. For PGA related memory allocation, the error would be 4030, 4030, not 4031. 4031 is SGA related, 4030 is PGA related. So from you know, an identification standpoint, when I see 4031, I know it is SGA related. So I will be talking about a few things here today. Um, if you certainly have uh, Oracle Enterprise Manager, so if you have OEM, it is pretty straightforward. What, you know, you can use the advisors on OEM uh, to be able to go find exactly where the memory advisors are 
and run the advisors to kind of recommend exactly what limits are, for example. So if you have Oracle Enterprise Manager, you can simply go to the Performance tab, and then you can certainly go to Advisor Home, Advisor Home, and from Advisor Home, uh, you can then check on the Memory Advisors, right? And then you can run that Memory Advisor from OEM. It's going to present a graph, you know, and you have to understand how to read that graph. There is a limit from which adding further memory is not going to be of any benefit to you. Okay. Now, I am using the manual method on this demo. And on the manual method on this demo, I'm going to take advantage of three particular V dollar views. Uh, the first V dollar view is V dollar PGA underscore target underscore advice. The second V dollar view that we would probably be able to use for memory, manually advising on memory is the SGA underscore target underscore advice view. And the last but not the least, of course, is the V dollar memory underscore target underscore advice. For this video, however, we would be looking just at the V dollar SGA target advice. And the V dollar target advice, the V dollar SGA target advice is a view that shows information about the relationship between the SGA to a projected value for DB time. The SGA and the DB time are closely interrelated when it comes to performance. So the V dollar SGA view provides information that helps us to decide what the optimal value for the SGA target might be. Now, for this V dollar SGA underscore target advice view to work, uh, we have a background process called the manageability monitor, which I'm sure you all are familiar with. Uh, a process that goes into the SGA and gathers statistics about SGA target usage and updates the V dollar SGA target advice view. So this is a dynamic performance view, and there are many dynamic performance views that you can use in order to see what's going on within your SGA. But for the purposes of memory, we are going to be using the SGA target advice uh, V dollar view. Now, in order for us to do that, there are some things that need to work. There are some key parameters within the database that need to work. The first of the parameters would be the DB underscore cache, cache underscore advice. That would be a parameter that you have to check to see if that is set within the database. And of course, our good old famous statistics underscore level parameter. And as DBAs, I'm sure you're familiar with this. So why don't I take you over to my database? I'll take you into my demo, and then we would explore these views and see how it's going. I'm using SQL Developer for this exercise. I already have some things that I've put here. And just to show you which database I'm working on, I will run a select instance name status host name from a GV dollar instance. So I'm working on a database called Prim, which is instance one is Prim, one instance two is Prim two, right? So these are the different views. Now, if I describe these views, of course, you should be able to see what the different columns are on these views, the structure of these different views, right? So I mentioned two parameters. The first one was DB catch advice. DB catch advice can take one of three parameters. It can take either on, ready or off. And the statistics underscore level parameter can take typical, which is typically the default or all or basic. Let's start talking about the statistics level parameter and then we can piggyback that into the DB catch advice parameter. So for the statistics underscore level parameter, like I mentioned, the default is set to typical, right? And uh, on database installation, the default is set to typical. What does typical really mean? Typical simply means that uh, for the database to work, to collect statistics, right? Typical ensures collection of all major statistics that are required for database self-management functionality and provides the best overall balance between performance and statistics collection, right? So typical is where you technically really want to have your statistics levels set to. Now, the different other levels, so uh, we mentioned all and base, all, you still have the level of collection that typical offers, but also statistics are collected for time operating system statistics and plan execution statistics. So that's an additional layer on the typical for the statistics level collection. You don't want to set it at basic because when you set this at basic, it disables the collection of many of the important related statistics required by your Oracle database features and functionalities, right? For those, sometimes I mean, for example, like things like 
AWR snapshots that are being, you know, uh, collected, the workload repository, automatic database diagnostic monitor. And we know these are pillars of the Oracle advisory framework. So we don't want this set to base. We want it set typical at the very least to provide a balance between statistics collection and of course, database performance, all right? Now, let's pick it back into DB catch advice. Why is the statistics level important? Because the default for the DB catch advice parameter is on. It depends on the value of the statistic level parameter. If the statistics level parameter is set to typical or all, then this DB catch advice parameter is going to be set to one. Now, if it is set to basic, statistics level is set to basic, it is going to be set, uh, the DB catch advice is going to be set to off. That is why it is important that we talk about what their relationship is. And if the DB statistic, if the DB catch advice is set to on, then certainly your V dollar SGA underscore target underscore advice view would provide you the information that you need to make an informed decision about how to optimize what the SGA value is set for your SGA target, okay? So uh, let's take a look at these parameters within this database to see where they are. So I'm running a query on the V dollar parameter for the DB catch advice and the statistics level. So DB catch advice, of course, is set to on. Remember, like I said, because this is set to typical, this one defaults to on. So um, let's take a look then at our V dollar SGA underscore target underscore advice. So let me run, first of all, um, let me run a select, select star from V dollar SGA underscore target underscore advice. And hopefully I spelled that right. Okay, good. So when we run a select star from the V dollar SGA, which of course is the subject of our conversation, uh, we have some rows that get presented here. And looking at these rows, uh, what's most important is the interpretation of what we see. So first of all, I want you to pay attention to what we call a size factor. The size factor of one simply means that is the value where the SGA is currently set. That is where our SGA is sized right now. SGA size in megabytes. So on this database, our SGA target is set to 500 on a size factor of one. Now going up and down this value, the size factor would just be a proportion compared to what we are currently set at. So 0.75 of 500 represents 375, right? So 250 represents 0.5 of 500. 625 represents 1.25 of 500. So that is what the size factor does. So SGA size factor is dependent on the SGA size. Similarly, the DB, the estimated DB time, the estimated DB time factor is dependent on what the estimated DB time is. So currently the estimated DB time is 58. Now, when we are looking at this query and trying to make a decision about what is the optimal SGA size that we need to, uh, to have for our database, what does that simply mean? So we have to talk about what slows performance or what we do understand by DB time. DB time is a time model statistics. That is the sum of the Oracle process CPU consumption and the non-idle wait time. So uh, let me write that here so that you understand what I'm talking about. So we have a DB time, which is equal to the DB CPU plus the non-idle wait time. All right. And again, when we are going to be talking about things like AWR and things like that, uh, we would use a lot of these keywords. And the DB CPU is simply just the Oracle process CPU consumption. And the DB time is a combination of that time plus the time spent in non-idle wait. So as an overall objective of performance tuning, what we are trying to do is decrease DB time. That is the whole goal. We want to decrease DB time so that things tend to speed up as they work. So when optimizing our databases, we are focusing on reducing DB time. So we want to see which size factor, which SGA is going to be able to strike a balance between uh, you know, the, the lowest possible DB time. And you know, uh, because of course, we don't certainly want to give Oracle database the maximum amount of uh, 
of memory, which is still not good. So in our interpretation of this SGA underscore target underscore advice, we are looking for a few things. We want to determine if the SGA target that is existing within the database is already optimized enough, providing us the lowest estimated DB time. If that is not the case, then we want to get the best performance by comparing which SGA or where it should be changed or it should be increased by which size factor to be able to give us the corresponding uh, desired estimated DB time. So we are looking for the best SGA size where there is a meaningful correlation between you know, um, an increase or a decrease in the, you know, the physical reads with the corresponding estimated DB time. So here you see here in the estimated DB time, right here it is, 20, it is 120. So beyond 120, we have 58. And beyond 58, we have 49. So where it is set now currently at 500 on a size factor of one, we have that it is giving us an estimated DB time of 58. Now, we can make a case if this were the errors that we're getting frequently to be able to increase that size factor up to, by, by 1.5, up to an SGA size of 625 megabytes. If we do so, then it decreases the estimated DB time to 49. Now, there is no point increasing it further because further increase in the size of SGA target doesn't give us a corresponding increase or, or a corresponding decrease, I'm sorry, in estimated DB time. So adding more memory is not gonna cause any effect. We're gonna just be using up resources and Oracle sometimes, if you give it too much memory, you might actually cause it to act up. So that's the whole idea of me you know, for me looking at the SGA target advice. If you like interpretations like this, if you found this a little bit meaningful to you, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, write in the comments what you would want me to talk about. I mentioned earlier that there were other views, PGA underscore target underscore advice, SGA underscore target underscore advice, V dollar memory. If you want me to talk about any of this, let me know in the comments and I would certainly do a quick video to explain exactly these other views, right? Now, if you want to dig a little bit further into uh, that or 4031, I found an interesting documentation on my, uh, on my Oracle support, uh, 138.142.1. And that actually is a diagnostic tool provided by Oracle support. So it gives you an API where you can, you know, you can, you know, fill in some boxes and it's going to help you diagnose, you know, what exactly would be the cause of your 4031 error. So uh, like I mentioned, if you like the video, please go ahead, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share with your friends, uh, enable notifications so that you stay informed of content that I produce. So thank you for watching and I would certainly see you in the next video.